Oh my god. I always just grabbed a cute little tampon and called it a day. If you are not healthy in your brain, being the best in the class or having the highest leg in your class really does not matter. Life is hard and ballet is harder. <laughs> posted a video in months even though I think I just missed like a week of uploads but still it breaks my heart but we're back and better than ever and I thought for this video today I would sit down and give you guys an updated q and I've asked you guys over on my Instagram to ask me some questions and if you are not following the Lazy Ballerina Club on Instagram go do that I'm super excited for today's video you guys asked me some really really juicy questions so make sure you are subscribed down below like this video and let's get into the questions. So I guess I'm just gonna like pick randomly. I don't really have a good system. I'm just gonna like see where this video takes us. So the first question is do you have to be flat chested to be a ballet dancer? I think a lot of people just assume that to be a successful ballet dancer you have to be flat chested and that is just not true. I mean it goes back to like the old school conversation of what is a ballet body, what isn't a ballet body, and I can make a totally separate video just talking about that. Being flat chested or having double D's or whatever size that you have really, really, really should not affect your dancing or your job or your career. But just look at Misty Copeland. She's got some good double D's on her and she is flawless and thriving. The next question is interesting and it is about how much should you get paid when you were in a company? Was it enough? So, good question. I'm so glad you asked and make sure you are subscribed to this channel because the next video that I am posting talks all about money and was it enough? Was it not enough? And I will answer this by saying you don't make a lot of money as ballet dancers. My first year making money as a professional ballet dancer, I think I made $150 a week, which at the time I was like so excited for. I could officially say that I was a professional and it was exciting and amazing, but I could barely <laughs> do anything with $150 a week. No, it definitely was not enough, but you have to start somewhere. And then the next job I got $250 a week which I thought I was like rich which couldn't be further from the truth but the reality of being a ballet dancer is we do not make a lot of money at all what is my least favorite ballet to perform in <laughs> let me think for a second because I performed in some pretty awful ballets in my career first ballet that comes into my mind is Swan Lake because of how difficult it is for the core we literally had six hour swan days so we were literally in that studio from nine in the morning till six at night just rehearsing the core swan scenes in Swan Lake while the boys in the company were out to lunch or had like the whole day off. That was intense, but performing it was actually really rewarding because it was so difficult. So one season we had to do Sleeping Beauty and I was in the second company. So I was just like a little lilac fairy attendant. And that was pretty torture. I mean, the costumes were disgusting. The choreography was like not fun at all. Maybe I'm gonna go with that. It was rough. It was really, really rough. So this person asks, adagio or allegro? I'm definitely more an adagio type of girl. I love a good, long, juicy adagio. I do also love a good grand allegro at the end of the class. I absolutely hate petit allegro. It's just not my jam. I am much more of the long legged, like get your legs up or a nice soda shot zigzag across the floor. So I guess I'm gonna go with adagio with like a little dash side of Grand Allegro. The next question is what was my favorite summer intensive program? This one's tricky because I have programs where like I improved the most and I look back at those years and I'm just like, wow. That program really changed the way that I danced. And then I had programs where like I had a really, really fun summer. I don't know, that's tough. But I guess I'll just answer both. So the summer program that I really saw 
the most improvement after was for sure by far the PNB summer course. I went in dancing one way and after I came home from the PNB summer course, I don't know for what reason my dancing completely changed. I had like a full like mental shift after that summer. I didn't really have like the time of my life in Seattle that summer. But I will say when I went to the Houston summer program, that program is very 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 intense. It was a really really good summer. I went with one of my girlfriends from my home studio. We met a good group of friends. Yes it was still intense but it was more of that balance of like having a fun summer while also being at a good summer intensive. So I guess I'll go with Houston. So this question is funny to me and how to deal with annoying dance moms who try to bribe for, for good parts. This is really taking me back because obviously once you become a professional dancer, you don't deal with this situation. It could be so frustrating and so annoying and the toxic dance mom environment is real and true. It's tough. I mean, at the end of the day, all you can focus on is yourself and it really doesn't matter what the person next to you is doing in class or the moms in the lobby gossiping. If you are able to stay in your lane and focus on yourself and honestly use everything else as like white noise, you will be so much happier and you will actually focus on the things that you need to focus on in your ballet classes or at your studio and as Hard as this may be, and it is so easier said than done, if you can just like remove those toxic <laughs> people out of your life or don't even like give them any attention, you'll be so much happier. And that is when you'll really see improvement in your dancing or at your studio. But oof, those dance moms, they're brutal. Okay, this one is a good question and it is the worst ballet recital experience. Oh my god. I literally still think about this to this day and it was probably my most embarrassing moment on stage. We were doing Sleeping Beauty. I was one of the jewels in the little pas de trois that we do in Sleeping Beauty. I had this gorgeous tutu. So it was the last performance of the weekend. I invited all of my friends. I invited the boy that I was seeing at the time and they were all in the audience, all my friends, my parents, the guy that I was seeing, his mom, like it was like a whole deal because I was like, oh, this is my senior performance. Like I am beautiful in this tutu. And so, do the little trio pas de trois, nailed it. I was living, I do my variation. So I'm feeling myself, I'm feeling confident. Home stretch, all we have to do is the coda. And I <laughs> get out and do the coda with the other two girls. We're all doing torgetes in a circle together and I go up for my second torgete that I do and I am telling you, you know those cartoons where like the person slips on the banana peel and they like lift up and they freeze and then they like land on their stomach? That was me. My leg slipped out from underneath me, fell flat on my stomach, and I quickly had to like look at the other two girls around me and be like, okay, what foot are they on? We have to keep going because they're literally coming after me as I'm laying on the floor like a dead seal at this point in my blue tutu. I was mortified. It was quite the doozy. I really, really ate shit. Like, it really knocked the wind out of me for a second. How did you deal with your period as a dancer? By the way, you are such an inspiration. I love you. Oh my god, I love you too. When you get your period, everyone deals with it differently, obviously. I always use tampons when I got my period in ballet. That was just the easiest thing for me. I know other girls use menstrual cups or pads or whatever floats your boat, but I always just grabbed a cute little tampon and called it a day. Moving on. Okay, this is another one that I really want to make a separate video on because I think it is such an important conversation to have and that is thoughts on dancing in college to become a professional. I think this is such a good conversation to have. Again, leave a comment down below if you want a full video on this. So, personally, I did not go to college. I went straight from high school back in California, straight into my professional career. There are so many pros and cons. Should I have gone to school before? What are the benefits?
benefits? Does it really matter? All of those questions. I have so many friends that danced in college and then got a contract after college. And the only thing that I will say is I started my professional career when I was 19. And if you are starting after college, you just got a few years of catching up to do, but you also gain so much from your college experience that I don't know. I feel like there are pros and cons with both. I'm noting that in my brain and stay tuned for that video because that is definitely coming. What is your best tips for turnout? The most important thing to think about is using the proper muscles. If you are trying to turn out by just like cranking your feet open or cranking your knees to the side, you are going to be ending up in the hospital. Your career is going to be cut in half like like that, if I'm just being honest. I know everyone wants that flat turnout, but it is like a gradual process. So starting with the proper muscles and strengthening those leads to gorgeous turnout. What is the hardest thing in ballet? At the end of the day, ballet is just hard. Every aspect of ballet is hard. Every situation of ballet is hard. Life is hard and ballet is harder. <laughs> but I think the hardest part about ballet or being a professional dancer or even just a student in ballet is for sure the mental aspect of it. I mean, the physical part of ballet is exhausting and almost impossible to accomplish. Then when you add that mental conversation, it could make anyone go crazy. And one thing that I wish that I paid more attention to as I was a young student into my professional career was to focus so much more on the mental side of ballet because if you are not okay inside and your mental state is all over the place, it is nearly impossible to have any success or have any positive experience when in a ballet studio. Do not sleep on your mental health in ballet. Which leads me to my next question and that is advice for young aspiring dancers. This is another loaded question because there's so much that I can say to all of you, but at the end of the day, no one's journey is the same journey. So I think it is so difficult in ballet to get out of that comparison game to the girl next to you in class or your friends in your studio or people that you follow on Instagram and every single person's journey in ballet in life is different. Maybe my journey was slower or faster or if they constantly compared their journey to mine, it would make them feel so terrible about themselves or vice versa. They might think they are killing it compared to me. If you are capable or if you are able to just focus on yourself and realize that everything is happening at the right time and the pace of your ballet career is just right on track you will be able to breathe a little easier because i think it is so easy to get in our heads and think about well if i didn't get a contract right out of high school or i didn't get into that year-round program that i'll never become a ballet dancer and i should just give up which is so not the case I see so many people on social media telling you guys what exercises to do to get the highest leg in the class or working on your stamina or all of the physical things that you can improve on in your ballet journey but not a lot of people talk about the mindset or where you need to be mentally in order to be ready for a ballet career yes i can sit here and tell you all of the exercises that i do to get my leg higher in my adagio if you are not healthy in your brain being the best in the class or having the highest leg in your class really does not matter i guess i'm gonna finish this video with a few questions that i've been avoiding answering a few of you asked similar questions and those questions are why did you leave ballet do you think you'll ever be in a professional company again Again? When did you realize that you wanted to leave your company? Am I going to dance again? Am I not going to dance again? I really don't have an answer for you guys today or tomorrow or I don't know. It is such a loaded question, especially with like the state of what the ballet world is like right now. I don't know. I think for the first time in my life, I'm allowing myself to give myself time and not put the pressure on myself of figuring out that answer today because 
I really don't know if I want to be in a professional ballet company again. I do know that when I am dancing and I'm in a studio in a healthy environment, I absolutely love it and I love performing and being on stage. But there were also a lot of toxic negative things that happened in my ballet career as well that one, I don't know if I'm even ready to talk about after dancing every single day since the age of five and now I'm 25. This is the first time I've really had this freedom. With that freedom, I think that will lead me to wherever I am meant to be in my life. And I know that sounds like very like hippy dippy, like I'm just going where the wind takes me, but I really truly feel that way right now. And it kind of feels good to not have that pressure of like, I need to make a decision and I need to be in a professional company in order to be a ballet dancer because that is just not the case. It feels really good to be in that headspace for a change. With that doozy, juicy question that you guys love to ask me, I think I'm going to end it here. It was so nice to just like sit down and talk to you guys. I feel like for some reason, I just put this like weird pressure on myself when I sit down and do these videos. All I am trying to do is connect with you and hopefully help you in your ballet journey and I'm just so glad we're building this community together and I know I say that a lot but I really 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 am grateful for each and every single one of you that sent in questions or has subscribed to this channel or messages me on Instagram I really appreciate it and we are in it together so before I start sobbing and talking about how grateful I am for you guys we are going to end it here. So if you are not subscribed already, make sure you are subscribed down below, like this video, and I will see you later. Bye guys.